All right, welcome back. Like I said earlier, today, the 16th of May, globally is celebrated as World International Day of the Boy Child. And we have so many dates where we get to celebrate the girl child and women as well. I remember the other day someone was saying, are we still celebrating Mother's Day? Sunday. How, uh, Sunday, Sunday, right? Was, how many, how many times do we celebrate mothers yes. and women <laughs> in a year? But we just have today to celebrate the boy child. And we know how this has affected the boy children, have affected society in a way. But um, we have someone here with us or joining us virtually that will be giving perspective to this conversation. She is Dinah Mary Owen. She is um, a journalist and astute journalist. Uh, she is also um, a mother. She is a lecturer and, of course, a women and children advocate. Good morning, Dinah Mary, and many thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Yeah. Okay, so um, we also have Uyai is here. Uyai Anirkan, she is also going to be talking to you. Good morning, Diana Mary. Good to have you on the show this morning. And your voice is really bright Hello. and elating. Hello, Uyai. It's nice to have you. It's th sorry, thank you for having me as well. Fantastic name. I like your name, Uyai. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. That voice is so bright. It's literally a rise and shine voice. Like uh, everyone, I'm like, telling you. I have to raise my head and be like, <laughs> so good to have you. Um, happy day of the boy child. Do you have a male child? Yes, I do. I have a son. I have a son. Oh, wow. That's great. So t today is the day that we are trying to focus on conversations around their health, the fact that they need to be happy, the, the fact that they need to be included in community life. It looks like we pay more attention to the female children. Um, so what's the journey been like generally, especially to see that you are also an advocate for women and, and children? children. Yeah. Um, yes, you have raised some pertinent questions, uh, sorry, concerns, I beg your pardon. It is true that we pay attention a lot. We don't need to shy about that to the girl child. That is because of the peculiarity and some of the, the challenges and some of the peculiarities of the gender. However, in doing that, we have channeled a lot of energy, which is appropriate. The girl child is deserving of that. However, should we ignore the boy child? No, we shouldn't. That's going to be a great uh, 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 disbalance, unbalance. So we have to put in the same effort. A child is a child. In raising my son and my daughters, they need as much attention. Mm. They need the same kind of concern. But you see, because there are so many things the girl child grapples with. So yes, it is just right that we pay attention the struggles of, uh, of, of, of the, the, the gender over time politically, socially, culturally, and otherwise. The, um, the boy child is blessed with, um, with the fact that we're in a patriarchal society. So you see, we always see the male gender as those in power, those with authority, those who run the show. So to an extent, we think that they don't need attention, but we have lied to ourselves. Mm. Um, a reflection of the society we see today, if we think men, men, of course, have most of the leadership roles in different spheres of society. So if we have poor leadership, yes, it's because we are not raising our boys well. Mm. And I stand to make that point very boldly. Sometimes I question some of the leaders we have and I ask, who raised these boys? Sometimes I question some of the husbands that we have and I say, who raised these men? Sometimes I, I question the kind, of, the kind of ills that I see that this gender perpetuates in society, creating a great imbalance. And I say, who raised these people? Mm. I, dare, I dare say that a properly raised boy will become a well-nurtured and behaved man. Mm -hmm. who will only do appropriately, do right by himself, do right by society, do right by his family, and do right by his God. I'll give you a little example. One day, my son told his sisters, he said to his sisters when he was about six, seven years old, and he said, after all, you people are girls, it's your job to be in the kitchen. And I looked at him, I said, do you eat? He said, yes, he eats. I said, okay, eating, cooking is a life skill. If you eat, you can cook what you, you eat. eat. So don't you ever tell your sisters that cooking is a girl's job. In the event you find yourself in a situation where you do not have who to cook for you, are you going to die of starvation? I had that conversation with him. 
When my son turned seven, he started making his indomie. He started making his food. My son is 12 today. At least he can cook soup everybody eats. He can cook rice everybody eats. He can make, he can make food. It's a life skill. It is not, it is not so, you see, and I teach him, you don't, there are things that, so I'm doing all of this because I want to raise a proper man. I want to raise a conscious man. I want to raise a leader. I want to raise a good husband. So I think that in our teachings, in our in 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 in, in, our, in our in our in our in our interactions with the boy child, let us take into consideration that as we raise the boy child, we are shaping the society. Even with leadership, mm. teach your sons how to take leadership at little places in little corners. Mm. They will ultimately become fantastic and phenomenal men. If you teach your boy child not to raise his hand on a woman, I dare say that when he becomes a man, he will not raise his hand on a woman. Some okay. of the boys are only mirroring what they have seen from their parents. Mm. Have we been worthy examples to the boy child? What mm. is your boy child seeing? What kind of man would he become? Is he going to be a, is he going to be a gentle man? Mm. Is he going to be a good leader? We should start, that is where, that is the crux of the matter mm. and vice versa. Mm. So I hope I have been able to address your questions reasonably or, or your concern reasonably. We as a society need to do more. Because the reflection of the society is a reflection of the kind of training we are giving our boys. Boys occupy most of the uh, uh, leadership positions in all the spheres, in the pillars of society. So if we have a weak society, if we have a bad society, if we have an unkind society, if we have an imbalanced society, it's because we are not raising the boys appropriately. Okay, Dinah Mary, let me just come in here very quickly. Let me, okay. let me come in here very quickly. I like the fact that you have mentioned um, that, um, of course, if the society is dysfunctional, it should be attributed to how you have raised your sons, okay? And then uh, you brought to a large in, degree, yes. Yes, you brought in the issue of uh, gender role. Now, let's even talk about yeah. gender roles. Now, growing up as a child... I was told that, oh, as a woman, I'm supposed to be the one cooking. I'm supposed to be the one, you know, washing clothes. The boys are supposed to be doing the tough jobs, like washing cars and owning generators and all of that. Now, it has set like a, a, um, a stereotype, you know, for, for gender roles. Now, we are saying that we should break gender roles. How do we begin to do that when a lot of families still tread on the lines of the stereotypes? Society, society has evolved significantly so, you know. Mm -hmm. We look at people now as human beings. It's the same way we tell girls. You can become what you want to become. You can become a pilot, you can become this, you can become that. Gender roles, I like to see it as, you know that men are the strongest of the gender in, in, in terms of brutes of strength, in terms of their power, their physical capacity to do more strenuous work, right? But that doesn't mean that if a woman is capable of, she cannot do it. She should become less of who she is if your strength go as far as your strength can take you that is not to say there are no boys that uh, uh, don't have issues with their strength there are some boys who are not as strong sure. just because they are male does it mean you will kill them with strenuous work so let us be sensitive to these things and treat people as human beings mm. first okay uh, over time we have seen that some of the there are cultures, okay, let, let's look at culturally speaking. Mm. There are cultures that women were not allowed, allowed to be chiefs way back. But now women are taking chieftaincy titles. And climbing women pulpits. Women are taking chieftaincy titles. And climbing pulpits. So women are being, so in this generation and this time, mm. uh, for, yes, when we grew up, we were saying that the boys should be, even till today, I still question the curriculum in my children's school and other schools. When you teach children in, society, in social studies that, Men, men, men will go out and work and pay school fees. Then women will be in the kitchen cooking. cooking. I don't like that example. Mm. Mm. I don't like that example because practically speaking today, That's all people are doing what they can. So mm. if, if you're a man and you're in the house and your children are hungry and your wife is not around, will they die of hunger? You will get into the kitchen and cook. If you're a woman and the children haven't paid their fees, they can't go to school. So are you trying to say the children will drop out of school? So we, 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 we balance these things. Let us teach children both boys and girls, to be responsible for themselves, their loved ones, and for society as it were. Mm. Let us not box people up. Let us give adequate attention to, the both, to both genders. 
Yeah. I don't know if I'm addressing your aunt, yeah. your questions accordingly, but definitely, yeah. Definitely, definitely. Okay, so uh, we see that you have, you know, balanced out and called out the family, you know, as the initiating factor in having a balanced child. So let's push a little further and see how the government can provide an enabling environment for our male children. Because in some of the conversations and examples that you have given us, it shows that Oftentimes, the, the male child is excused for some of the things that he does. He's excused for some of the things he does in his family. And even when he goes to school, he's excused. So what would you say is the part of the government? What can the government do to help us have balanced males in our society? Um, okay, uh, the government. I think uh, uh, first we have to start with the family because the family is the first the family is the first government that we have exactly. and what the government can do is that i gave you a very good example uh in the course of this conversation when we started mm -hmm. i said that our, our books some of our examples we need to visit to, uh, the, the school curriculum mm -hmm. stereotypes and um, some of this neglect actually is reflected in some of our textbooks i don't know if you take a copy of social studies books you will see it um, the government needs to look into re revisiting the school curriculum in terms of the educational, um, how, do I, how do I explain, in terms of reviewing the curriculum and giving appropriate examples. Because from, from you know, children have this thing of whatever their teachers tell them in school is what is Lord. Exactly. And when the, My teachers, teacher use, said yes, this. When the teachers use this, yes, when the teachers use these textbooks to teach them, when they come home, even when you're trying to tell them one thing, they tell you, no, this is what auntie and uncle told me in the school, mm. you know? Mm. So the boy begins to grow up in the consciousness that, all he has to do is possibly wash the car, clear the grass and do this. So what government should do, I think that government should do a lot of sensitization because beyond, but even if the government does the work, let me take it back that the family has the primary function of doing that job. Mm -hmm. And what the government has to do, um, another issue of education is in sexuality education. My daughters had a lot of notes in terms of the things they should pay attention to in sexuality education, but my son had my son had a, re a really brief, a really brief uh, instruction, because but sexuality education doesn't only have to do with sex issues relating with sex. It has to do with the totality of your gender, your comportment, your behavioral patterns, and everything. Mm. So I think that we should look critically into this, you know, and so that children, either at schools where the government is fully in charge, and at home, you know, we can bring the kind of uh, change that we want to see, mm. or the kind of uh, the kind of concern that we want to have for the boy children. And also besides that, um, if there are policies that should be made in policy making rooms, uh, there should be concern. Truly speaking, I think that the, the male gender has more of the power to do good for their gender because mm. they are the ones in the corridor of power. They're the one in policy making rooms. They're the one making decisions. So they should be a little more intentional and wield all of this power that they have to create the balance in raising the boy child as well. Mm, because I, that I think... touches on stereotypes such as um, the fact that people go to apply for jobs, but there are stereotypes that say, oh, the women will always have you know, the favor to get jobs and opportunities. But then, you know, uh, Deanna just said something about the fact that the men are usually the ones calling the shots. So they should make sure that there's also a level playing ground for the agenda, even with regards to professional life and all of that. But, you know, just... Uh, but, but again, mm -hmm. I, I think, Dana Mary now, I, I think that um, most times it's, you know, it comes down to the fact that they say, oh, men are very strong. They don't know how to ex how express it. emotions mm -hmm. and all of that. So maybe that's why we do not have the male gender, you know, trying to push advocates for the male child. We just feel that because we are we are men, mm. we can handle our matters by mm. ourselves, you know, exactly. quietly, you know, and all of that. that's something I wanted us to also unpack. Mm. Um, part of today's conversation, the focus of today is looking at, you know, how they can have a healthy mind, you know, mm -hmm. dealing with the fact that men also have emotions. Emotions, yes. yes. So how do they unpack this and deal with the fact that they feel hurt, they feel shy, you know, all kinds of emotions that you can actually think. The, most of the things women feel, men feel it. They yes. just have, you know, a, a way, way of hiding it. Yes, and, and you know, society has encouraged them to live that way. To so we don't know if um, Dinah uh, Mary, Mary is somewhere there again, but this is a really strong conversation and she has pushed a lot of um, strong narratives for us to look back into. We need to review how we handle our male children first from the home front. Yeah. You are the one determining the type of president elected 
effect we are going to have. You're the one that is determining the type of fathers and husbands we are going to have. So it also behooves on husbands and wives to do right by raising their male children. Yeah. And I think that in today's conversation, balance is the key word. Yeah, definitely. Creating a balance for both the male and the female gender as well uh, to grow up in a society where they believe in themselves and their capacity. But I want to say a very big thank you to Dinah Mary for joining us on that beat, you know, to look up at um, International Day of the Boy Child. At this point, uh, we'll just take a break now and end. Uh, when we come back, of course, we'll come in with another guest of ours uh, looking at some kinds of injustices that have been meted out. Thank God today is International Day of the Boy Child. Injustice mated against somebody and we need to draw the attention of government to this particular issue. We'll be right back. Do stay with us. <laughs>